Hey folks, welcome to Wolfman's Gaming Den. Today we'll cover the tutorial for the game Canopy, designed by Tim Eisner, artwork by Vincent Dutre, and published by Weird City Games. Uh, Canopy is predominantly a two-player game. It's a card game where basically you'll be taking cards from the play from the main game area putting it onto your tableau and then scoring different uh, points. You want to have the best forest basically in front of you this is the theme of the game. Uh, the game is mainly for two players, as I've mentioned, but the uh, box does come with one player as well as three to four player variants inside there. For the purposes of, the uh, of this tutorial, I'll be covering the standard two player game. I'll also be talking about some of the advanced versions and variants for the two player uh, count game as well. I will not be covering the teach for the solo or the three or four player variants. Uh, so uh, if you're looking for, if you're looking to learn the three or four player game or the solo game, this video will still help you because it will teach you the basics of the game itself. And you might have to go into the rule book to le learn about the differences for those different play accounts. But if you're looking for uh, uh, the two player experience, including all the different variants and options that the game comes with this tutorial will definitely have you covered uh, top to bottom so uh, we're good on that front so uh, to start off let's by, start by looking at uh, what we have in front of us and then we'll go into uh, setup and uh, turn structure and scoring and all of those different uh, good stuff so generally speaking the game is played over three seasons and we can see that written out over here so this says current season over there and then you have season two and season three on those two sides you will see that there are three different columns in here with different number of cards we'll come to that in a little bit later but that's generally where you're getting the different cards from these three decks correspond to the three seasons in question this is the season we'll be playing with right now once this is done uh, when we go to second uh, the second season we'll use the cards from here third season we use the cards from there this is what's called the seed deck and you can identify it with the back because this would be very different uh, so you'll have this off onto the side over here games comes with a bunch of different tokens you have the points tokens uh, which are these individual uh, ones which are off to the side. Uh, you have these different animal tokens. You can have them off to the side over here. And then there are going to be different uh, three tokens, uh, three points, four points, five points, and then a 10 point one. So have them off to the side somewhere nearby that you can refer to uh, easily. Now, in terms of setup, uh, start by giving each player one of these reference cards. Uh, there are, the game comes with two of these. So uh, this will basically give you all the everything that you need to know in terms of what the turn structure looks like. And uh, importantly enough, uh, what the end of season scoring looks like and what actions you're going to go through for end of season items. So it's a very handy sheet to have in front of you. So give each player one of these uh, and they will put it uh, in front of them like so. Give each player one of their starting cards and you can identify the starting cards because their back will have a different color. So most of these standard cards, as you can see, will have a fully uh, green color with a slightly blue hue. Uh, but this one certainly is very different. It's blue slash purple hue. So this is the starting card. The game comes with four of these. Uh, of course, you might need them if you're playing the three or the four player game, but uh, in a two player game, you're using two of these to so give each player one of these. Uh, the image will be that of a tea trunk with no points printed over here. Uh, each player will take one and put it in front of them like this. Next up, uh, take the entire deck of these cards, uh, and these are all sort of like the main cards in the game. Uh, you will take out the advanced cards. Uh, the advanced cards can be identified by, we have the advanced cards taken out over here. The advanced cards can be identified by the purple symbol on the bottom right hand side. So as you can see, these are the advanced cards because they have this purple mark uh, over here. Uh, for standard game, take all of these out and put them off to the side. You'll not be playing with these, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, take all the shifting seasons cards, which look like these, and put them off to the side as well. You don't use this for a standard game. You use this one of the variants. We'll come to the variant later on as well. Uh, so there's going to be a, a big, you know, thick pile of these different cards uh, that you will now have. Uh, take the entire pile, give it a thorough shuffle, uh, then take 10 cards and put them aside. So these are the 10 cards that we put aside over here. That's so that, you know, you don't, you're not card counting, basically. You don't know all the cards that will come out. There's a little bit of mystery uh, because of the cards that are taken away. Then divide the pile into three roughly equal uh, piles. Don't count them. Don't. It doesn't have to be an exact count, but as long as they're equal enough, it should be fine. Uh, put one over here with the current season marker. Uh, that's the one we'll be using for the current season. Uh, then put these two aside for season two and season three next to this card over here. So this card has the seed pile marked which goes over there, the two season cards over there. Uh, these two cards will be laid out onto the uh, uh, in front of the play area. This goes where the current season is marked. 
Then once you're done with that, you will draw one card from there, put it under the new growth pile. Draw two cards from there, put it under the new growth two pile over here, and then three cards and put it in that pile over there like so. Uh, and with that said, you're done with setup and you're ready to get started. So on your turn, like as I mentioned, uh, well, before we go to the turn, the game is played over three seasons. So let's keep that in mind as we go into the turn structure itself. Uh, and what we'll probably do is well, let's use this reference sheet uh, and we'll go through this for the turn structure as well as the scoring stuff so that uh, it's easy for you to refer back to this as well when you're playing the game yourself so that you can figure out what to do. But the turn structure is very simple. Basically, uh, if you're the star player and you can choose the star player randomly or it's whoever's watered plants recently, according to the rule book, uh, you will take the cards, any number of cards that you have under growth uh, pile one, uh, which right now is just one. Uh, so you're going to take it. You're going to look at it. You're going to decide whether you want to add it to your tableau or not. Uh, if you choose to add it to your tableau, you're going to do that and then draw one card from there and put it over here. If you choose not to to add that to your tableau, you will put it back under the new growth pile uh, one, take one card from here and add it here. So uh, as you go through these piles for each column you go through, regardless of whether you take it or not, there's a card that will be added to that column uh, over there. Uh, so if you haven't chosen it, take one card, add it here, then you go to this one, do the same thing, look at cards. Now you have two of them to look at and you look at both of them together. Uh, decide if you want to keep it or not. Uh, again, if you keep it, uh, this card now, this column now becomes blank. So take one card, put it there. If you don't keep it and you put it, uh, the two cards back, right now it's two, and then add another card over there and then do the same thing with the third one as well. Now, if you choose to keep the third one, that's fine. You add the one card over there and the three cards will go into your tableau. But if you decide that you do not want to do that, uh, you will put the three cards back. You're still adding one more card onto the third pile, but then you will draw the top card from this over here and you're drawing just one card and you have to add that to your tableau over there. So uh, that's sort of like one key distinction. You're you will definitely add at least one card in front of you. It's just, do you want to add cards from these columns or do you uh, do the random draw over there? The one other important distinction is once you go through each column and you've decided that you do not want to add that card, you can never come back to that column. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. So if I decided I didn't want this, I go over there, I decide that I don't want this, I go over there uh, and having looked at it, I'm like, okay, these are all cards that don't do me any good. Maybe I really wanted to have this uh, column over here. I cannot go back to it. Once you pass on a column and you've moved on, you can never go back to it. That is one of the key conceits of this game that you want to keep in mind as you're going through it. So uh, that's basically it done. It's pretty simple from that point of view. You basically go through that. Uh, and then once you've taken the cards either from here or that pile, you put it in front of you, turn passes to the next player and you keep going back and forth like that until you run out of this deck and then you still finish up with all the piles. The season will end when all of these cards are completed. None of the cards are thrown away in that sense. Uh, they're all used up uh, throughout the different turns. Uh, if you're the last player to take a turn in the season and you know you just have one column, uh, you don't have a choice. You have to pick up that column uh, at that point. So if you ever don't have a drop pile over here and you've gone to the last column uh, that's available out uh, on this side, you have to pick up that column. It's not an option. That's basically how the turn will go. Now. That's how the season works. So let's pause up until the season at this point. Now let's look at when I say you put down cards in front of you in a tableau. What does that really mean and what are you doing? So let's maybe do a couple of turns. So I might pick up this. I'll have a look at it. Uh, it's the sun card. Uh, and we'll talk about scoring later on. But let's say, for example, I decided to keep this in front of me. So I'll basically take this. I put it in front of me like here, like so. And then one card face down will get added over here. So that's easy enough. But let's say if I decided that I didn't want to take this. So this card will go back. So now we know that if you have a sun card or a rain card, uh, it just basically goes face up like that. That's, that's all you're doing for cards of that type. Now let's say if I didn't want this, I'll take one card from here, I put it back, and I'm going to have a look at both of these. Uh, now, I get a C card and I get a Monstera card. Now again, I might choose to keep it. I might choose not to keep it. If I wanted to keep it, a seed card will go over here. This card will go over there. Uh, and then I will draw one card from there and put it over there like so. That's, that's all I'm doing. Uh, so for most of these cards, they basically just go in front of you. Now, certain other cards work differently. So let's maybe go to one of these piles and see if we can find something that does do that. Uh, an easy one to understand, and we saw some of these sun cards 
uh, would be the tree card. So let's see if we can find this is the other rain card that I was talking about. Uh, let's see if we can find uh, tree card. Okay, so here we go. So that's a good one. That's a good one. So let's say the card that we now have to play in front of us is one of these uh, tree trunk cards. Uh, you can play this in one of two ways. Uh, you already have a tree trunk at the start of the game. You can either start a new trunk by putting it in front of yourself, like so, or you can extend the existing tree that you have. And the way that you would do this is by putting it underneath. So now you've extended that tree uh, as you can see over here like that. That's basically how those cards would get played. Uh, you don't put them off to the side, but you can of course start a new tree as I mentioned earlier. Now you have these canopy cards and these basically go on top of the trees. Whenever you get one of these cards, you have to put it on top of a tree and that basically caps the growth or the length of that tree at that particular point. Uh, it's not optional, so it can't be like, well, you know, I'm going to put it off to the side and uh, cap off a tree later on or anything. No. If you have a tree that does not have a canopy on top of it, and you have taken a canopy and you have to put it down, you must put it if there's an available spot. If by any chance this canopy was already here, and I don't have another tree, and now I have a canopy card that I need to put down, that card then gets discarded. It does not go on the tree at that particular point in time. That is the only situation in which a card may get discarded without necessarily anything happening to the play area or anything else of that sort. So that's that. Let's have a look at how some of the other cards might work as well. So these are uh, plant cards, as we've seen. Plant cards basically go in front of you. Uh, these sun or the rain cards also go in front of you. Uh, fire cards are interesting. So they will go in front of you, uh, but at the end of the season, something will happen based on sets that you might have. Uh, and the other kind of card seed we've already seen, you might also get animal cards. And let's see if we can find something like that. We'll come to diseases later on. Uh, drought. Uh, if you pick up one of the drought cards, basically uh, you will have to take any one card in front of you that's not a score tree. And I'll talk about what a score tree is. And you discard that and then you discard the drought card. So that's one that takes an immediate effect uh, whenever you do that. Uh, and well, somehow this deck does not seem to have any animal cards in there, which is interesting. Uh, there we go, Toucan. Uh, so this would be an example of a wildlife card that you might get. And again, if you get this similar to plants, this basically will go in front of you like so. Uh, so the game will keep on continuing like this until we get to the end of the season. Uh, and when we get to the end of the season, uh, certain actions or things will happen based on this sequence over here. And the sequence is important. So let's go through them one by one. So end of season, the first thing that you're going to do is if you have any wildlife with the uh, end of season effects, you will activate those right away. So in this case, we have a wildlife over here, but this card does not have any end of season effects. What this tells me is if this is the only two can I have at the end of the season, or rather at the end of the uh, game, uh, I will score two points. Uh, but if I have two of these, uh, and there is another toucan that's going to be in here, I will score uh, the additional uh, points over here. So I'm going to score five points for both of them. Uh, but in this case, this guy's sitting alone, and animals don't score in the end of season, so we don't need to worry about that. Uh, but there are other animals that might have end of season uh, effects. So let's see if we can find something like that. Uh, so there we go. So we have a poison dart frog. Once per season, before your turn, you may add one card to each pile. Now that's not an end of season effect, that's an in-game effect. But this tells you the kind of things that you might find on cards that might have an effect at the end of season as well. So if you have any cards that do that, you will do that at that particular point in time. So that's done. Once we have done the uh, wildlife action, oh, uh, let's uh, see if we can get this to focus in correctly. Seeds. So if you have any seed cards in front of you, uh, you're going to draw three seed cards over here, plus one seed card uh, for each fire card that you have in front of you. So if you remember, we had seen fire cards like these. So if you have any fire cards in front of you, uh, that will add to the number of seed cards you get. So in this case, if I had uh, one seed card and one fire card, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw three cards from here because I have a seed card, one, two, three, and then one card for each fire card I have. Right now I have just one, so I'm going to draw one more over here like so. Uh, and the good thing with these cards are these basically help you expand your forest. So these gives you access to new cards that work in a very similar way to what these cards do. And you're going to put these out in front of you uh, in your tableau. So again, canopy, plants, plants, sound cards, works pretty much the same way. So that's basically what you're doing with the seed cards. 
uh, and then you discard the seed card, uh, obviously. Um, threats. If you have two or more fire or disease, lose plants or wildlife accordingly. So let's have a look at the fire card. Uh, so at this point, if you have two fire cards, if you have one, nothing happens, obviously. <laughs> but if you have two, you need to discard two cards, two plant cards from in front of you. So if I had this, I might have to discard this card and then another plant card at that particular point. On the other hand, if I had three fire cards, I discard one, not two, I discard one, and my opponent needs to discard a plant card. So that's important. So that's how basically how the fire card will work. Uh, then you, of course, have the disease cards as well. The disease cards affect animals instead of plants, and they work pretty much the same way. So if you have two of them in front of you, you need to discard two animals from your play area. Uh, if you have three in front of you, you need to discard one and your opponent needs to discard one. So this is how you might be able to impact what's happening with your opponents as well. So there's a little bit of interaction happening at that particular point. Uh, so that's the threat cards. Uh, once you've resolved those, you now move on to trees. Score completed trees and mark with a wildlife token. Award dollar tree bonus. So if you have any completed trees, and in this example, if I had put down this canopy over here, I would have completed this in this round, I will score the tree now. So basically the way that scoring will work is uh, these symbols are the point symbols. So you will basically add up those points based on what you have in front of you. So this one basically says, uh, this obviously was my starting card, so this gives me no point. Uh, this one has two written on it, so this will give me two points. I'm going to pick up two point tokens from over here and put it to the side. And then this one says zero for each card that I have, which is not really all that great because that doesn't give me any points. Uh, but other cards might actually give you points. So let's have a look at uh, the canopy card we had seen earlier and see if we can pull that out. So this one would be an example of a pretty good one because this card says you get two points for each trunk card underneath it. So if we had this over here instead of the other one, uh, this is going to score you two points for each one of these two cards. So this tree would score me two points plus four points from here for a combined total of six. And I would pick up six tokens from over there. So that's basically how that would work. Uh, and you would do for all of these and each tree that is scored so you know has a canopy completed on top of it will now get an animal token uh, you take one of these tokens and you put it on top of the tree this is a reminder that that tree has been scored and it will not be scored again for the rest of the game so that's a very critical factor once a tree has been scored and the marker has been put down a it doesn't score again and b uh, nothing can impact this tree. You cannot take off the canopy, add anything to it. This is just locked in at this particular point. Uh, so that's basically what this token represents. Now you also, as you'll see here, it had said award tallest tree bonus. So you would then look at who has the tallest tree uh, in the between the players that are in the game table right now. And for that round, you would award the tallest tree bonus it has to go to a tree that hasn't gotten a tallest tree bonus yet so it could be something that's shorter than something that maybe received that bonus in an earlier round so for the first season you will award the 3.1 for the second season you award the 4.1 and then for the third season you award the 5.1 so at the end of the season if this was the tallest tree then i would basically pick that up and i'm going to put it here as a reminder that this tree had gotten the tallest tree uh, bonus in the first season. Now in the second season, if for any reason, let's say my opponent had a uh, uh, tree of two completed that was not that had just been scored uh, and I didn't have anything, that two could basically be the tallest tree for the second season and they would get the four points. Even though I have a tallest tree in front of me right here, but this is already scored, it's already gotten this, so it cannot be competing uh, for that one in a later season. So keep that in mind. That's an important distinction. Uh, so once we have done with the trees, we now move on to plants and weather. Score all plants and weather cards. Now the weather cards, uh, if you remember, we had a look at, uh, you basically have the sun and the rain cards. Uh, and let's bring a couple of those out. So basically the sun and the rain cards do not score points uh, by themselves. But for every set that you have, so for every uh, set, as you can see here, that you have, you will score five points. So these two together will score me five points. I'm going to take up those tokens and then discard this to the side like so. <coughs> so that's a plant and well, weather cards over there. Oh, sorry, plant cards uh, basically are these cards. And this is uh, these have a bit of a set collection aspect to it. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to look at all the different cards 
uh, of the same type. And you would score points based on the table given over here. So this one basically says, if you have only one Monstera card, you get zero points. If you have two, you get zero. But if you have three or more, you get eight. Yeah, you definitely want to have a lot more of these. Uh, so, you know, you want to have three or more of these if you can, because that will give you eight points. You would take the points tokens from there and then this get discarded right away. Uh, other points, uh, plant cards can score in different ways. So Monstera, uh, again, we can see works pretty much the same way. Uh, but Fern is an interesting one because if you have one, you score two. If you have two, you score zero. Three, you score six. Four, you score zero. Five, ten. You get the gist. It's sort of like alternates. Whereas others like Bromelia basically can give you points at lower counts. So one is two, uh, two is seven. But if you have three or more, you're going to lose three points at that point. So you definitely don't want to have a lot of these. You just want to have one or two of these at that point. So the plant cards are going to score. And again, you collect the tokens and you discard the cards right away. And then the last thing you're doing is basically clean up, uh, which is discard all cards except trees and wildlife. So all the cards that we had played in front of us that were trees, seasons, fire, drop, whatever, everything goes away. Uh, the only cards that will remain in front of you are going to be the tree cards and they're going to be the wildlife cards because uh, the wildlife will score at the end of the game, not at the end of the season. So you do that at the end of the game. Uh, once you're done with the end of the season in that way, uh, you will now basically be out of, you know, the deck runs out, all of these are out. Take the season two deck, put it over there. Again, deal out the cards the way that we've done with the setup. And then the game proceeds uh, from that point onwards. Again, going back and forth. Uh, end of uh, season two, season three will play pretty much the same way. Uh, and once you're done with the end of the third season, uh, you basically will do some specific end game stuff. So this is where the wildlife gets scored. So, you know, all the wildlife cards that you have in front of you will get scored. So if you have two toucans, uh, this card will give you five points. If you have just this one, it gives you two. Uh, if you have the animal cards that have that uh, flavor text uh, written in front of them, let's see if we can find uh, some over here. It's not on this deck. That's not going to work. <laughs> let's see if we can find some over here maybe there we go so present that frog if you remember our friend from um, uh, earlier in the video so if you have just this card this gets you two points which is neat uh the other present dot uh, dot frog card will have some sort of a condition like this printed in front of it uh so if you have both of them this card will get you here let's get the focus in this card will get you two points and the other card will get you the full five points because you have the set of two but if you have just this it's worth two points or if you have just the other one it's worth two points so that's basically how the animal cards usually will score at that particular point uh, and the last thing that you're going to do uh, and this is where this one comes in is you're going to award uh, the largest forest token which is worth 10 points so basically you will look at around the table and whoever has the most completed trees in front of them length of the tree doesn't matter uh, a short one is as good as a long one uh, and whoever has most of those will get the 10 point token over here now if you're ever tied for any one of these tokens or for the 10 point token ties are friendly so both players will get the same number of points uh, at that particular point in time and that's basically it. Add up all the points that you have uh, with those different tokens, and then whoever has the most points wins the game. <coughs> now, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a couple of different variants that you can use with the two-player game as well, so let's quickly run through those. Uh, if you remember, we had put these cards aside. Uh, now you have these uh, advanced uh, cards in here, so you can sort of like bring some of these in to the game and play with that. Uh, you can bring in the advanced uh, plant cards. You can bring in the advanced wildlife or any combination thereof. Uh, if you do bring in the advanced wildlife, uh, you need to take away the existing wildlife cards that you have in the deck and replace it with this. That could be one way of doing it. So there are four different ways in which you can play the advanced game with these cards. One, uh, just add the advanced plant cards from here and that's your game. Two, you can add the advanced animal cards, taking away the standard animal cards, and then you play the game with that deck. Or three, you can add all the plant cards, you add all the advanced animal cards, and you take away uh, the standard animal cards, and then you can play with that deck. Or four, mix and match, which is basically you add the plant cards, you, uh, uh, between the animals, you add pairs of these, so as you can see over here, this would be an example of a good pair. Uh, you take pairs from the advanced deck 
and the standard deck, and you add seven of them uh, into the main deck, and then that becomes the deck that you play the game with. Because you're not going to be using all... You can use all the plants in a particular game, but you cannot use all the animals in any individual game. And it's generally the gist of it. So that's one of the variants that you can play with. The other variant is basically called Shifting Seasons. And that's basically where these cards come in. So you're going to take at the start of the game these cards, shuffle it up, uh, take three, and each one of these three will have an effect uh, for each of the different seasons as you're playing through the game. So for the first season, you could be playing with Season of Hunting. At the end of season, before scoring, each player must choose to discard one wildlife card at random or lose four points. So it's just something that you're doing either in between the game or at the end of the game uh, or at the end of the season or something like that. So, you know, a season of stature. Uh, at the end of the season, instead of the tallest tree award, the player with the tallest tree gets one wildlife card of the choice from another player. Adds a little bit of interactivity in this one. Uh, season of uh, Symbiotes. Uh, each time you complete a tree, you draw two cards from the season deck, choose one to keep. You, you get the chest. Basically, just read the card, and then the effect is applied either during the season or at the end of the season for that. And you're going to apply each, uh, do one of these for each of the three seasons like that. Uh, and that's basically it. That's basically the game uh, of uh, Canopy. Uh, hopefully you found the tutorial helpful uh, and the examples were good to illustrate how the game should be played. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them down below. I'll get to them as soon as I can. And in the meanwhile, thanks for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy this and if you're interested in other uh, tutorials, unboxings, reviews, uh, or video game uh, videos uh, of which I put up quite a few uh, uh, recently, do subscribe to the channel. That will help you, uh, hopefully keep you up to date uh, on these things when and as they come up. In the meanwhile, thanks for watching, and I will see you the next one. Take care.